Hello Virgo, welcome to your monthly forecast. This is for the month of March 2024. This reading can be used for Sun, Rising Moon, and Venus, and it will help you navigate all the time between now and the end of March. With that being said, let's get into channeled messages first and foremost. Uh, something beautiful came through in dreams this morning, and it was inner child healing. And it was a kind of unusual image that I saw because I saw a parental figure but I also saw like the adult version of you. And then I was shown this sort of embrace where you went into the arms almost like a baby and just received this unconditional outpouring of love. And this for many of you can represent a chance to mend the ways, even if maybe your parental figure is in, you know, um, whether it's mom, dad, grandmother, etc. If they're in spirit, you can still have that healing happen. If they're still alive, it's a chance perhaps to do um, a little bit of work in that space, whether it's you having a conversation with them or you just kind of working on anything that you're holding on to from the past. For some of us, we're, we're seeking or wanting that external validation. That sort of parental figure can also represent just needing and wanting to be loved. And there's so many different people that could be playing this role from friend to boss to mentor. Um, the thing here that I saw, though, is that you were complete. You were fully grown and fully capable just as you are. And so part of this is just the realization of how strong and power, powerful you are. So I have this sort of um, the two different symbols that came through Empress energy and child, because we all are that um, at the end of the day, we have that inner child that still wants to be loved. But as we grow up, we also embody the creative, nurturing and powerful energy that we would see there in the Empress card as well. On a deeper level, we can go beyond the potential, just understanding that you are complete and whole and go beyond the healing possibly between you and a child or you and a parent. And it's really about the inner child coming through saying, don't forget about me. And the inner child reminds us of the importance of having fun, um, experiencing joy, playing around just like Apollo is pets and children. They remind us of the importance of slowing down and being present. So take a moment, just like I am with Apollo, um, love yourself, love your family, love what's going on. Um, have some fun too. Uh, one of the great things with those of you that have pets too, um, they are so easy to please. Taking them on a walk, snuggling with them and watching TV, um, just taking a moment to say hello to him. He's still gonna fluff up his bed in the background, but um, they just want a little bit of attention. So does that inner child too. So don't deny yourself the joy the playtime, the fun that each and every one of us needs. Um, this could also be a chance to deal with deeper things like safety and security. And we're talking more on an emotional level. Do you feel safe in your relationships? Um, do you feel secure and self-sufficient? These are uh, larger sort of things that will help you get to the next level in your life. Now, I very rarely get dates, but I was given a date marker in spirit. So I took a moment as I was looking at the two people embracing and I asked spirit and it came through the voice of that parental figure. I said, what's the date? I have no understanding or, or kind of like reasoning behind that, but I wanted to know the date and I got nine, nine. So of course this can be September 9th, but it could also be nine days or nine weeks. Uh, we could also be looking at the nines, um, you know, like the ninth of this upcoming month in March. However, it factors out to you, uh, it's a really powerful number because it also shows being near a complete phase. So you could also have two different things in your life, like a project or a different opportunity, even something that you've been working on developing yourself. And all of these things are starting to come to a close. Let's quickly just visit the cards here that I have. Nine of Wands is showing that you are um, really, really close to completion. The next thing is Ten of Wands, which is traveling and expanding. And so it's saying just push to the finish line. Nine of Pentacles, it's slow and steady to get to a place of stability and security, something that that inner child is looking for. Nine of Cups, overwhelming emotions, usually joyful. Uh, and it's basically saying don't lose your balance in that moment. Put everything in context. And the Nine of Swords is the one that is the sort of troubled child of all of that. And that is stressing about the unknown. What if this happens or what about that? And it's basically saying, if we look at all the other cards around it, this is probably just the inner saboteur or just the energy of fear coming through and trying to shake your confidence. With the power of Nine coming through twice, I feel like you're in a good space. Don't second guess yourself. 
do push to that finish line and do take a moment to have some fun and to celebrate. Let's go ahead now, turn the camera down and take a look at the cards and see what additional messages are coming through. And just a reminder, you can again use this for sun, rising and moon sign. And we'll actually go into all of that a little bit later. Let me focus on the cards now and see what messages Spirit wants to reveal for March. All right, let's begin with your catalyst card. We have an end to chaos because we have the chaos card in reverse. This is a really interesting illustration, depending on how you look at it. It looks like a tree here. There could be a spider web here. Um, lots of different things. It's almost like one of those ink blots, right? So for some of you, you're just putting together the pieces. And uh, by the way, we have a card beneath it. So we have this sulfur card too which is really, really interesting. Um, so let's first talk about the chaos card and then we'll talk about sulfur. So with the chaos card, uh, there could be something distracting you. It could also just be the energy of change making it difficult to concentrate, right? So this is a chance to slow down and basically put together all of the pieces. And just like we see here, make sure that you're looking at things from all the different angles and that's gonna help you get beyond that. Being comfortable with chaos, being comfortable with change, I think that's also an important piece to the puzzle. I think it's really telling that the sulfur card was just beneath the chaos card in reverse. This is a distraction and it reminded me of this card. Um, so the seven of swords in the, in the far distance there, we can see a dispute, possibly even the energy of the five of swords because these two work in concert, but something going on where people are distracted and then in the foreground, someone's taking advantage of that distraction. So if someone tries to put up a smoke screen, stop for a moment, wait for the smoke to clear and really look at things for what they are. Um, it's like the wizard behind the curtain. We really need it. There's a revelation moment that's gonna happen here. If something doesn't feel right, just trust in that. This is just one of the senses here, but spiritually speaking, sulfur is usually a lower frequency sort of thing. So something's gonna strike a chord energetically where you're like, this stinks, it doesn't smell right, doesn't feel right. I want you to trust that. It will reveal itself, but you have to let the initial distraction or the smoke screen clear. So we'll keep an eye out for that. That's just one potential block, but it's also an, a confirmation where you think to yourself, how did I not see this? Sometimes it's just a matter of being prepared. Sometimes the person's kind of, you know, working in a tricky way and you wouldn't have noticed it until or unless you slow down. So. That's our takeaway from that is slow down, be present and tune in to all the different senses and trust them at the end of the day. We're gonna get into the center card here in just a second, but as a preview of everything that's in front of us, I just have to take a moment to uh, really kind of underline some of these cool energies that are coming through. First of all, it's a different version of, I had chosen like the Empress and the Six of Cups, but guess what? This is like the adult you, this is like the child you, and this is parent and child when we're looking at Major Arcana, the world and the fool. So that's very, very cool as well, because they're the bookends basically, big ends, big beginnings. And this of course is the ultimate card of portals, the death card. So you're represented by 
overdue change and we see that it's already happening. It's happened and it's still happening. So it's about embracing change. That's the big thing that I see so far and trusting your intuition. And yes, healing that inner child. All of the stuff in channeled messages came through and then some, including some partnership and love. So without any further delay, let's get straight to the center card. So we have Queen of Cups. She is the penultimate card of reception. Obviously, King of Cups would be the top of the suit. But this is basically saying, take a moment to reflect. We can see the, you know, literal reflection, but it's also figurative. And it's saying this, this for many of you could be like a mini life review or like a pulse check to say, do I like where I'm at? And we saw like that sulfur energy here. If something doesn't smell or feel right energetically, you know, trust in that and say, I need to move in a different path. Generally speaking, when she is reversed, it's basically just a moment of healing, letting go of someone or something that doesn't serve your highest good, um, allowing for the heart to heal, uh, and also just giving yourself time and space to, you know, sort of feel safe and, and get your bearings in a new situation. And also, maybe nobody in your life gave you the support that you needed to feel like you deserve good things to come through. So I'd like to start this reading off for those of you that might be struggling with a little bit of self-confidence or wondering, can I do it? This card wouldn't come through unless you have the potential to receive. So I'm getting more of an inner block than, uh, and, and more sort of in a thought process than anything else. So the answer is you're capable, you're deserving, but you have to wrap your head around it and say, I've got nothing to lose. It wouldn't come forward if I wasn't ready. Let's do this, okay? If you're dealing with something heavy emotionally, energetically, this is also just saying it's all right to be sensitive or vulnerable or feeling a little bit triggered in the moment. It's just about how you're going to manage that or what you're going to do with it. The sooner you attend to that, and that's maybe why I saw the mother and child imagery in my dreams, the sooner you can do that, the sooner you can enjoy what we see here. In the deep past, you've already taken a step in the right direction, but this month, it wants to go one step further towards complete expansion. The world card is such an exciting energy when it comes to all aspects of your life. So in a relationship, it's taking it to the next level. In career, it's being able to spread your message far and wide. In personal development, it's that graduation or light bulb or aha moment. This is basically saying the sky is the limit, which is meaning like, you can keep going as far as you allow yourself. This is the ultimate card of expansion and capability. So don't let emotions stand in the way. For some of you, there could have been a perceived hiccup or slight block, but it's not going to persist. What I get is two steps forward and one step back, which is still, if you mathematically subtract it, still one step forward. So this Full energy, which took a step back, isn't going to stop the inertia and the gravity and the power of the world. The world keeps spinning and you are spinning in the right direction, Virgo. It's just about potentially just looking at this and reframing something that happened in the past or just happened and saying, okay, that wasn't optimal, but everything else is going okay. I'm not going to let that get me down. It could also just be someone that said something or did something and we're not going to let that one naysayer or one person that lacked faith or vision, um, again, keep you from what we see here. Some of you could be moving. Uh, you could be moving in with someone, moving out. You could be moving across the world. You could be moving up. Th this card is just about spinning in that right direction. And I'm excited for the changes and the movement that that's going to offer you. Deep past, the fool. As I said earlier, these two cards together are like a mother and child. Um, this is the child that finds its way to this kind of self-sufficient and, and adult world card. But what's going on here? Play. Maybe you just need to slow down for a moment to have some fun. This is one of the, the most enjoyable and sort of like um, easy to connect to full cards that I've seen. It's just about like feeling free. Footloose and fancy free definitely is what I get with this one. And if we look at it a little closer, you can see how there's a motion blur going on there, which is showing that for some of you, you may just desire this sort of slowing down. Things are going too fast, but sometimes change happens quickly. And based on what I'm seeing with these three cards, change, expansion, and it's basically saying you have to kind of go with the flow here. But 
If you need a moment to take a deep breath, please give yourself that. This reminds me also of What Dreams May Come. It was a movie with Robin Williams. And there was, at the very beginning, this moment where everything kind of looked like a painting and the lines were blurred and things were kind of coming into focus. So if you just started something new, it's not going to look perfect, feel perfect, be completely predictable. That's kind of how life moves and goes sometimes. So one message here is just about making peace with that initial ambiguity and perhaps finding a way to bring order to chaos. Um, one step at a time. If you're cleaning up a house, for instance, you don't attack every single room. You do one section at a time. Same thing in your own life. Just get one thing uh, sort of sorted out and everything else will follow through. Another really powerful message with this is you can reflect upon the past you can learn from missteps, mistakes, experiences, etc. But you can't live in the past and you definitely shouldn't live in the energy of could have, would have, should have or regret, in other words. So framing everything as bringing you one step closer to this card uh, and ultimately, you know, when we look at time traveling movies, you wouldn't change anything because it's all brought you to this point. And when you start to make those changes, that's when the timelines get messed up. We got one of the nines that came through that I talked about, the nine of wands. This particular nine of wands came through reverse, but let's turn it upright just so we can appreciate the illustration. We can see someone that has climbed all of the steps of the ladder to success, and they are continuing to put everything into place and into play. Now, I'll show the traditional card in a second, but one of the things that we see here is sometimes the need to be a little bit pushy, to stand up for yourself, particularly since this is reversed and not to back down on something that you've worked really, really hard in order to create. Sometimes at that 11th hour, a person will come through and say, are you sure? Or they, they kind of put this little seed of doubt. Don't let that take you off the path um, that you already know is bringing you in a good direction. This is just saying stand tall. Uh, what I love about the Nine of Wands is it's a card that shows that you've been there and back again and almost nothing can uh, hold you down or hold you back. Let's look at the traditional card though because it offers a couple of nuances that you don't get in this upgraded one. So what we see here is a person standing in front of all these wands, but there's a couple of things. First of all, a sense of resilience, stubbornness, um, this sort of ability to fight for what matters most, but also we have the bandage there. So for some of you, it's saying don't overthink. Don't think yourself into a place where there's too much pressure, too much stress, etc. And of course, this is also saying you fought hard to get to this moment. Some of you have had to face criticism, um, feedback that is less than savory. And here's what's cool about this. You are going to succeed and move past that. And you're doing so with strength and grace and dignity. So don't give up. OK, this is just basically showing your strength and power. Sometimes we need to see it and need to sort of realize just how capable we are and how far you've climbed to get to this moment, to get to that apex. As we take a look at your crowning card, we have five of wands coming through, and this can represent an end to unnecessary competition. Also a chance to rise up to leadership. But let's talk about the challenges in this card first. Usually what's going on in this is we would see five people pushing those wands against one another and not really making progress, just trying to be heard, trying to be seen. And we can also see the sort of irritated energy here with the uh, yellow and red and orange representing also those lower frequencies, and not lower frequencies, but the lower chakras. So one, two, and three. So that stability, that's expression of your power and your desires. And then it's also your power itself in the solar plexus. All of those things are lighting up. So you may feel some of the primal energies coming forth this month. And the challenge and opportunity is to rise above. For many of you, you're going to go to this card, the Six of Wands, which is the next in the suit. And this is basically saying there's a better way. Let's organize. Let's not push all of our energies against each other or speak at the same time. Let's basically get all of our energy aligned so that we can move forward. You may have to be um, sort of like the voice of reason this month, but you have what it takes. That's the next step. So we see you already moving beyond this and not necessarily taking the bait here. So if someone tries to engage in um, competition or tries to push you in a direction that you don't want to go, you're just going to lead by example. And that's really what this energy is taking you to. And that's the next card in the suit. 
And the way that you're going to do it this month, Virgo, is through your vision. Um, and we have one of the best cards for creating a synchronicity, for tuning into, you know, uh, your higher self, and that's the High Priestess. It's all about manifestation. As you can see, she did come through in the reverse state, but in the upright state, she is able to see beyond any sort of perceived limits or blocks. And one of the things that she's really encouraging you to do is to trust how you feel. So we have that interesting sort of smoke screen and then the sulfur card that came up a little bit earlier. She's going to help you get to the ability to smell or see or feel or sense something much faster. All you have to do is close your eyes for a moment, take a deep breath and just think to yourself, what needs to happen next? How do I feel about this? And also open yourself up to exploring different options. Uh, meditation will be very helpful in this period of time. This is the, the most psychic card I could pull, so I really want you to lean into your instincts. Typically, the only time that anybody really regrets something is when they have that intuition and they ignore it. So if you get this sort of flash of clarity and a light bulb moment, you think, I really should do this. I really, I should call this person. I should say no to this opportunity. I should um, say I'm sorry. Whatever it is that's coming through, do it. Do it in that moment because that's going to help you get to the next portal, the next opportunity all that much faster. And this is an end to stagnation. So the, this is trusting your instincts and this is saying, let's get on that horse and ride again. Let's try something new. If we take a moment here and look at one of my favorite versions of the death card, we can see really that much like what we saw at the center between the fool and the world, this is also an opportunity to step into something new. Um, death and rebirth are two sides of the same coin. And so there could be something in your life that you're just holding on to. And we can see that in the fear area here with the four of pentacles. So the four of pentacles typically comes through because we think to ourselves, you know, better this than nothing. Better to have the devil that you know than the devil that you don't. They're both devils. Don't go through those sorts of energies. Instead, say, I'm willing to put myself out there and try something different, try something new to expand my horizons. So the world is expansion, so is death and rebirth. In this particular deck, um, we can see that things are not fully shaped, which is something that I was talking about even with the Fool card. We don't see the specter of death, but we know that it's there. We know that change is inevitable, if not already underway. So the main thing this month is to deal with the change, to embrace the change, to be an agent of that transformation. When you step ahead, again, going kind of into the Six of Wands energy, then you can ride that sort of transformative wave. Uh, typically, I would use that analogy for the tower, but it really comes through with rebirth and a death energy too, because it's saying, let's go in here and it's kind of like renovation. Let's reshape the way that this looks and feels. And that's what this month is also about for you, is shaking things down a bit, um, changing it up, trying something different, uh, and really having some fun with exploring the opportunities, okay? If there's something in your life, and despite your best efforts, it's not moving forward, try a different path, because everything that I see with the past and this present energy is saying, it's time. And many of you already sort of see a way. It's just about letting go of this. One way that you can get there faster, one thing that's coming through as a big blessing this month is partnership, friendship, and networking. The Two of Cups can basically indicate any number of things. For those of you looking for love, this is very auspicious. It's reversed, so there could be, again, the Queen of Cups was reversed too, so there could be something inconvenient about the timing. Maybe you just started something really big or important. Maybe you have your intentions or attention on something else and the universe is like, hmm, you're, you're detached from this. You may not think you need it or care about this anymore, so I'm gonna throw it in the mix. Here's the thing, it still feels like a blessing. So if you're ready to embrace this opportunity for those that are looking for love or friendship, it's here. And it did feel like that image from spirit could just be God in the universe saying, I have some sort of an upgrade for you. And it was, it was sending you some love, maybe in the form of a friend or a love interest or just opportunity knocking. We also see two people here reaching for the highest possible outcome. They're reaching for the stars. And for some of you, you've been waiting for a long time for this kind of relationship or opportunity. Don't let go at the last minute just because you think, 
um, it's never going to happen. Let's reshape the narrative and just say, I'm, I'm ready to finally see a shift or a move or a recalibration when it comes to love and appreciation. In the realm of work, this could just be recognition. Someone saying, thank you for the work you're doing. We're so happy to have you here. It's love and appreciation. In a relationship, it could be someone coming forth and saying, let's, are we in this together? Let's do this. Um, and just generally speaking, it's a very magnetic card. There is some sort of internal resistance, and hopefully I can help you move beyond that as we look at the last couple of cards here. So in Hopes, Fears, and Opportunities, we have the Four of Pentacles. Um, if we take a look at the traditional card, it's quite different. Let's look at these two up front uh, in the main camera here. So here's your traditional Rider Waite Smith card. We'll, we'll talk about that one first. We can see the Pentacles squarely over the heart space. And typically this card is representing something that isn't enough. However, it's there, it's predictable, it's in front of you. And sometimes what happens here is it's about settling for good enough or what's convenient. And this is basically spirit coming through and saying there's more than this if you're ready, if you're willing. And so it's letting go of something that doesn't sort of fulfill or sustain or satiate and asking for more. And sometimes, because this is in hope, spheres, and opportunities, we're afraid to ask for more. We've been taught not to, um, you know, shake things up. So don't be afraid to advocate for more, particularly when it comes to salary negotiations, compensation, payment. Also, in a relationship, this takes on a much different sort of tone, and it's someone who can't give you what you're looking for. So lots of different nuanced energies there. Take what makes sense for you. When I look at this updated image, what I actually got as a download is that some of you are waiting for the other shoe to fall, like for something to go wrong. We see here someone saving for a rainy day, kind of in this tent in the middle of the woods. And I'm all for having a contingency plan, having a savings account, you know, insurance. Yeah, we all need to kind of like prepare for unexpected outcomes. But what we don't want to do is put too much energy into the fear that something bad will happen. Um, it's more saying, I've got myself covered, I know what I need in case something takes a weird turn, but I'm going to focus on the potential and the good opportunities in front of me. So don't put all of your energy into the fear of a mistake, a misstep, something that isn't going to go the way you want, you know, the unknown. Because yes, there's twists and turns, but it feels to me like you're set up for success, okay? So don't put too much energy into fear. And finally, we have the healing energy coming through here. And it feels like you're one step closer to this. Right after this comes balance, Six of Pentacles. So the only thing holding you back from balance is basically inner child healing and basically healing some things from the past. It's a little harder to see in this particular illustration. So we're going to go to the updated one and then we'll reflect back as I've been doing with many of these. So it's bold and clear here what's going on. Sometimes there are two wounded people that just don't have what it takes to be there for each other in the moment. Um, because I saw like a parent and child, it could have been a parental figure or an adult in your life that you needed in a certain way and they lacked the tools, the, the courage or just the faculties to show up and give you the love and support that you needed. So spirit did it in the vision. You can do it for yourself. And you can also lean on the support of friends, family, even a therapist to help you out with this as well. Now, um, this can also indicate just a call to attention for health. In this card, it's also really easy to see what can be affected. It's usually the foot, the ankle, and even like the, the knee and below, basically. So if you have any pain there, obviously work with a doctor. And because we are still having some inclement weather in the Northern Hemisphere, just watch where you're walking. But even in the Southern Hemisphere, this can just be about multitasking and tripping and falling. So be present and you should be all right. One thing that really strikes me as cool in the difference between these two is these people are on the outside looking in and these are on the inside basically looking out. There's always this grass is always greener energy that we would get maybe with more like the Four of Cups. But this is showing you that you're not alone, that there is there are people outside, there are people inside. This is just basically about getting out of the fear and the energy around the fear and focusing on the potential. Now, when it comes to uh, moving towards abundance, we're getting closer with this. One, the next card in this suit would be Six of Pentacles, which is discernment, weighing things out and saying, 
Um, I can't do all of this. This is where I can make the biggest impact or this is how much I can give to you. Saving a little bit for yourself. That's like the next step here. Before we go any further, let's uh, talk about the expanded portion here. So we're going to take a look now at health, wealth, love and destiny. We're going to delve into mind, body and spirit, the health card first. Let's see what's coming through. The reward. Um, so something good is happening this month, folks. It says celebrate your magnificence and we have a dancer in this card uh, and she's having fun she's having a moment feeling the energy of success when was the last time you did something that was just playful or joyful or fun please give yourself that out that that sort of like connection this month it's overdue for many of you and if something good happens don't worry that something bad is around the corner Sometimes you just enter a period of life where things are easy or good. Let's just hold that space right now. You've done the work and it looks like things are expanding and moving in the right direction. Okay, let's now um, take a look a little bit deeper at all the different health cards. Again, uh, I'm going to be looking at the energy of health. If there's a specific issue, you'll work with your doctor, of course. The number one thing that came through smack dab in the center is emotional and mental health. So if you need to talk to someone and if you need some support in your life, please focus on that first. That will open up so many different doors. Some of you might also be grieving or dealing with a loss. And that is why we have the Queen of Cups and the Death card here. There is love and support here waiting to be tapped into. Sometimes all you have to do is ask. So here in the recent past, we have the Nine of Wands. And as we talked about just a moment ago with the Nine of Wands, um, traditional illustration helps us. What we can see here is a focus on the crown chakra. Some of you may be dealing with stress headaches, migraines, um, jaw pain from like TMJ or clenching, maybe even the upper part of the spine. Uh, there could be some alignment issues, whatever is going on there that could be throwing you out of balance. You want to focus on that first and foremost so that that's not impeding with your ability to embrace all the opportunities that are coming in. The four of pentacles is also interesting because holding on to things this is where sometimes you, you don't even realize that you're um, sort of hunching over or um, taking your shoulders and pushing them up as you're typing. So what happens here is it's the shoulders, um, the sort of upper arm, the neck, interesting places here that could be out of alignment because of that. Also just the way that you might be holding on to things like an ergonomic adjustment is what I'm seeing because it's the center area that's getting off, um, off alignment and that can be from how you're typing, holding your phone or whatever kind of work you're doing, you might just be not aligning your body properly. So even a chiropractic adjustment could help out there uh, as well. The death card in reverse, stagnation, something in your life needs to be changed up. A routine isn't doing what it used to. So an exercise, it's basically saying you have to try different things to stimulate the body. Stagnation is something that we also want to pay attention to because what we saw here, there could be something going on in the environment, sulfur, uh, where it's like damp or pungent or doesn't smell right. So I want you to focus on that too. It can indicate things like mold or allergies or pollen or things that are agitating. And, um, and it could sort of like go into the olfactory place first, but um, any part of your body may be sensitive to this. So uh, really, this is a chance if you haven't done some spring cleaning, it doesn't matter what season it is, but take a look in your closets. Also do some preventative maintenance, clean the filters in your air conditioner, in your car, um, go through things that might be just stuck and holding on to things because we got that with the four of pentacles as well. And we want to release that so that energy flows, air flows, and um, so that you can avoid something like this. So again, the death card in reverse is saying it's a, a wake up call and it could be a close brush with something that could get exacerbated if you don't deal with it now. Preventative maintenance, cleaning, spring cleaning, and then paying attention to things that are just not moving in the, as much as they should. That's what's most important. And stagnation in the body can be any number of things. So there could be congestion um, because of, you know, asthma. There could be, you know, sort of like buildup in the veins for those of you that have cholesterol. Um, you know, this is something where getting a good physical can help you sort of see where that is. But there's something that needs to get unstuck. And it does feel like you have the capability to move through this because we have the world card. So one step at a time. We already talked about the five of pentacles. So you can go back and listen to that. But again, just taking care of general foot, 
care is key. And I like to remind people one additional thing that we can talk about is just changing your shoes or um, paying attention to the soles of your shoes just in case there's anything there that needs to be dealt with. Sometimes we wait too long on things like that. So if you know, it's starting to wear down or, or become frayed, it's time to get a new pair of shoes. Let's move on now to wealth resources, life, purpose, and career. You got two cards here. Let's just turn the camera down so you can see it. Um, the first one was the Flamingo Spirit, and then we have the Beaver Spirit. So let's look at each one, card by card. Flamingo Spirit, embrace the in-between. Liminal is a fancy word for in-between spaces. And sometimes, I mean, I actually feel like you have very much liminal energy this month. This is that portal that we, we showed you here just a moment ago, stepping through one thing into something else. And then when we look at this, this is the end and this is the beginning. So it makes sense that when we're looking at work, some of you might be between jobs. Some of you might be newly retired. Some of you might be students looking for work. Some of you may feel like you're neither here nor there. You're somewhere in between. There is this sort of what next energy when I see the flamingo. This dancer almost reminded me of a flamingo dancer, but... Um, this is basically what I like about a flamingo energy or, or totem is it's bold and it's not afraid to stand out. So one of the things that I would say for you is to have fun in this moment and not to try to blend in too much. Doing something unique, singular or different, not only is it going to make you happier, but it could make you more successful. And also it's saying, you know, you don't have to match up with what everyone else is expected. You're in a new phase, and as you step into this new sort of version of yourself, there's going to be some days where it feels awkward or in between, but that's exactly where you need to be. The next card is going to help you as you're in that in-between phase, and it's the beaver spirit, which is a builder. So lay a solid foundation. It's okay to be between one thing and another. Take your time to feel out what you want to do. Know that you have the power, the capacity, the wherewithal to build a firm foundation. I was just talking in the last sign about, um, I was shown an image of like four, uh, four legs of a table and we really wanted those four legs to be stable and even and level before you put the, the slab of wood or whatever on top. So it's kind of like you're doing that same thing. You're getting everything, the foundations of your life, of your building set up and it's a little bit of that construction zone right now, but it's gonna be good. Beavers are very good at constructing things, so you've got what it takes to build. And some of you maybe are thinking of going into architecture, construction, um, something in your life where you feel like you're building or creating something, and this is just confirmation of that. Let's break this down into three categories. We'll look at those of you that are working, those that are seeking employment, or those that are in between. This could be um, retired or students or um, people that just aren't focusing right now on work. Starting first with those that are employed. It's a time for change. This is a card of boredom um, or of feeling stuck. Some of you are there and this is just saying it's time to move beyond that. The devil you know is still a devil. And for many of you, you may not be getting the compensation you need where you're at. So that's one particular narrative that I see. Some of you have over, uh, overcome this already and you're already at that breakthrough and you're stepping into something new. And it's saying, yes, you're in between, but you're also building something bigger, better, brighter. So trust yourself, trust your vision, and um, continue to work hard. You've got what it takes to make it to the finish line. Uh, what I like about this for many of you is it feels like a change of scenery or a change of maybe even like a different career. It's exactly what you needed. It's, it's invigorating, reinvigorating at, at that as well. Trust your instincts. For those of you that are successful, happy, not looking for major change, what we get here is a connection to something beyond, being able to see past a block. So your creative vision can work around limits and resources, which is something that is coming through for many of you. So it's not just about working harder, it's about working smarter and being a visionary. And that's where you're standing out head and shoulders above the rest. So lean into that visionary energy. Challenges across the board for everybody this month um, are around getting more resources. Whoever holds the purse strings is holding them pretty tightly here. You can get a little bit more, and it's a little closer to what you need. This is a break-even card. It's not necessarily a card showing a surplus, but you can recuperate losses. You can get into the black, and hopefully um, the month after that, we can go a step further and get into the Six of Pentacles as well, like I said. So you're treading in the right direction. This is a card of the dust settling 
And it does feel like there's something that needs to be released from whatever it is that you're doing. So do less, but do it better. Work smarter, not harder. Trust in your vision. Trying something completely new or different could be very, very favorable. And if you're, well, we'll talk about looking in a second, but even if you're looking for a career upgrade or move, it may require a physical move as well. The main question that that spirit is posing to you is, are you happy? If you're happy or if you're passionate, all of this stuff, stuff is manageable. But if you're not, it's time to shift and look in a different direction. Let's now focus on those of you that are seeking a job at this moment in time. Of course, when the world is coming through, this can represent a breakthrough, so that's good. It can also represent a chance to travel for work or move for work, so I just wanted to validate that. This is also about perhaps for some of you taking a step, not necessarily backwards, but doing something that you've always wanted to do. And it's sort of like finally you're taking a step in that direction. So going back and finishing something that you started but didn't complete, that's, a, that's an opportunity. Possibly even going back to school, whatever. There's some unfinished business in the past that needs to be dealt with now. Uh, one of the biggest opportunities this month is to advocate for more. I see a couple of offers on the table. One is a lot better than the other. Both of them could be a little bit better. So really focus on negotiation skills. And it's interesting, this morning when I woke up, I thought, not for myself so much, but I was thinking about resumes. I thought to myself, I can't even remember certain things, like I couldn't remember my GPAs. And I, because I, because of the work that I'm doing now, I haven't had to send out a traditional resume probably for about a decade. Um, and in fact, I took what I had like online and just wiped it. I'm like, I'm doing something new now. I don't need to focus on the old me. But I thought to myself, wow, if I had to kind of put it all together, I don't remember all this stuff from the past. Um, for some of you, it may be a chance to level it out and start from a clean slate and maybe think about like what's working now. Because also what I was using, using 10 years ago wouldn't be like the current template for resumes. So think about a complete reboot. Um, starting from fresh and from scratch and maybe even having someone take a look at it. I forgot to put that in my slides this morning, but I did wake up thinking, why am I thinking about resumes? Now I get it. Some of you are trying to make a big change and sort of redirect or reconstruct your sort of like career trajectory and that's a necessary piece to it. Also, and I spoke to another sign earlier this month, but it's coming through again for you, this can be rebuilding or reimagining an online presence, particularly a website or like a LinkedIn profile. And it's saying, uh, don't sell yourself short because this is selling yourself short. You have more to offer than this represents. So the CV, the online presence, the website, something is understated. And when it comes to, I don't want you to kind of like, we want you to be honest, but you want to use the best possible examples and um, have someone objective look at this to make sure that you are speaking to all of your skills, talents, and passions. Okay, enough said with that. The way to get there, and this has been a common theme this month, is potentially through a partnership. Um, there may be a chance for a friend or family member or someone to pull you in the door of an, a new opportunity. Uh, talk, talk to people around you. Be conversational about this because when when someone hears about you, they're going to put that in the back of their head and think, oh, yeah, I should reach out to this person. I know they're looking for work. OK, um, but the good news here is I do see something coming through when it happens. It happens really fast. It could require a move and um, it might exactly be what you're looking for. And then there's this moment of, oh, my gosh, can I do this? Yes, you can do it. Shifting the focus to those that are retired. There is a sense of uh, mourning that happens when you retire. Now, I didn't retire per se, but I did walk away from a corporate career path of 15 years. And I remember for about three, maybe even up to six months after I did it, it took me a while to really not feel guilty for not going to work every day like everyone else, to not feel like I needed to apologize or over, or over explain rather what I was doing, and to just ease into a new sort of path for myself. When I did that, it was liberating. And I finally felt like free to explore. And like me, you might decide to take on other hobbies or interests, and you can do it 
without having to worry as much, hopefully, um, because you've, you've done the work to lay a foundation. Uh, and that's the key thing here is to make sure that you have what you need. The only kind of reality check, this is maybe more for those that are thinking of retiring. Uh, I would love to see you a little bit higher up in the suit of pentacles. So one thing you can look at is making sure that your investments are solid and on you know, stable ground and that you've also um, you've done enough work to to calibrate how much you're going to need. And if not, then save a little bit more before you pick. There are different dates that you can pick for retirement. So just get real with yourself and with your financial advisor in this case and make sure that the date makes sense for you. And then maybe you're also going to do something, you know, I think nowadays we see continuing work through the golden years, right? And so when you're retired, that doesn't mean that you can't continue to freelance and do some things just because. And then, then you can leave some of those investments and some of that nest egg intact. So if you want to work, you can work during this period of time. Um, definitely, you, this is a month for creation. By the way, for those of you, whether you're um, employed, looking for work or retired, that's one thing that I want to highlight for everybody is the ability to create a new path or something that hasn't been done. It's coming through most for those that are retired, possibly because you have a little bit more time, um, but there's a chance to create something new. Students, some of you want to travel abroad. Some of you want to do something completely different. You said you were going to do one thing and then after consideration, it's like, I want to do this instead. Follow your heart, follow your intuition. Um, the horizon looks really, really bright. Don't overextend yourself financially. I think this is true of everyone this month. The four and the five of pentacles are cutting things too close to the wire. So just generally speaking for finances, this means that make sure that your mortgage, your rent, or your outgoing costs are not too high. If there's anything going on there, this is the month to trim the fat a little bit. Look at things like streaming services, um, subscriptions, anything where you might just not be realizing how much you're spending and pull it back a couple of notches. And that's everything for wealth. The main thing that I see overall this month is a chance to start something new and to go bigger. And that's pretty exciting no matter how you look at it. Let's move on to love and relationships. The message here is the divine matrix and it says interconnectedness, synchronicity, and then they made up a word that is impossible to say, like God instances. Let's not make up words for synchronicities. <laughs> That's all it is, interconnectedness and synchronicity. We don't need a bunch of fancy words. Um, what a synchronicity is basically is you and the universe creating, co-creating this amazing portal, this amazing opportunity. Again, connecting us a little bit with this. You're letting go of one thing, you're allowing something new to come in, and this portal is allowing for the expansive energy that we see at the center. For many of you, this expansive energy comes in the form of a partnership. There's a little resistance to the partnership, but it's something that you've been co-creating and dreaming of. So basically what I see here is a wish fulfillment opportunity. The heart's desires are starting to come into, um, into manifestation. But sometimes when we see that, we, we feel this sense of it can't really be or I don't deserve it. So let's avoid both of those things and let's now focus on three different categories as I'm looking at love and relationships. Those in a relationship looking for love or single and happy. For those that are in a relationship, it's all about growth and expansion. And the world card can represent taking it to the next level. So if you've been dating for a while but haven't made it exclusive, you're having that talk this month. If you are exclusive but are curious about like moving in together or getting married, it can be that. If you've been married, this can be about having children, whatever. It's the next level. That's basically what I see with this energy. And because it's crossing um, favorable cards, it looks like you're moving in the right direction. It's just a little bit of difficulty in stepping into that conversation. But once you do it, things flow nicely. And don't, don't overthink, don't overplan, just kind of allow yourself to, you know, trust yourself, lead with your heart. For some of you, there could also be some fear or anxiety over money or health because these two cards represent challenges with that. I like that I see the two of cups here. The only uh, resistance to this is maybe just a fear of being vulnerable or not being the strong one or whatever, but it feels like the partner wants to be there for you. And it's important in a, in a really strong relationship, you have to work together. There's a little bit of work to be done, but favorable cards throughout. This is a chance to change up the routine and try new things. 
this is really interesting to come through in relationships, especially when we're touching a card that's related to passion and love. So some of you may have kind of fallen into a routine and maybe the intimacy is missing. Maybe the together time is missing or the appreciation. Um, so expressing yourself in different ways and showing playful, intimate appreciation, whatever, there's a new way to communicate this month. And uh, feel free to explore that and talk to your partner about what it is that you need. It's not just about intimacy, it's just about having fun and having time together. I mean, that is intimacy, but um, I'm talking like it's beyond the physical. This is more like emotional intimacy and together time. It feels like that's really, really important here. There may be too many things going on. So especially for those of you that have kids and jobs and a lot of responsibilities, it's hard to see through the fog. And sometimes by the time you do, it ends up being an argument. So we want to make sure that it doesn't go that far. Don't make a mountain out of a molehill. Uh, and if you're dealing with a lot, maybe talk to someone first um, to get some clarity on this. And uh, there's, there's only so much the partner can help with, by the way. So one really cool thing, if you are in a situation where you or your partner is dealing with a lot, um, you don't have to be doctor or parent for each other. You just have to be present and supportive and help one another find the tools and resources. And when you take that pressure off yourself and your partner, anything is manageable at that point. I think that's everything. So this actually feels like a fairly manageable month when it comes to existing relationships. The only thing getting in the way could be health or finances or a fear of expressing your feelings. And um, if you can get past that, you will be fine. There could also be just a death or a change that's happened in your life and that kind of shakes the foundations and that could bring about this. Um, and so now more than ever, you'd want to lean on the partnership and it will grow and it'll go to new levels because of that, because of the honesty and the intimacy. Okay, so that's everything for existing relationships. If you're looking for love this month, can you find it? Yes. Um, the, the new love energy could be coming from a different background, a different geography. It could also be someone who is wise beyond their years. Like I just see this beautiful expansive energy coming out of left field, someone that you didn't expect to come through. You shouldn't have to force it and it shouldn't be a lot of work. It should feel easy and it should meet your expectations. There are a couple of blocks here, finances and health. I'll keep mentioning that. This month, the one thing that could kind of hold you back in any aspect of your life is just taking care of physical health, emotional health, and your finances. Get on top of those things so that when opportunity comes knocking, you can answer with open arms. Again, this could be new for you. If you've been um, single for a while, or if you've been married for a while and now you find yourself newly single, this is a new zone. This is the liminal space here, the in-between. It can be a little bit of awkwardness. Just embrace it. Be honest with your with this new potential partner that you might be meeting. And uh, you don't have to be perfect all the time, right? And I think that's key here. But don't try too hard. Um, it, does, it shouldn't be too much work. And I think the main thing here is to balance out your energy first. And it should happen naturally. It feels like it happens more quickly than expected and in an unexpected time or space. Okay, let's shift the perspective now to uh, those that are single and happy. If you're single and happy, this is a time to explore the world, explore new things. Um, you might be connecting with new people from new backgrounds. It's an expansion time. And one end is a new beginning. And that's what you have. You have three cards of ends and beginnings. And again, this card perfectly encapsulates that. We got the two of cups here in the environment, and this can be partnerships on different levels. So friendships, new business alliances, um, extracurricular activities where you're just meeting like-minded individuals. This is saying explore the different types of people that are out there. And this isn't, obviously you're not putting your energy into dating, but you, you could and should be putting it into networking, mixing, mingling, exploring. For those of you that have your own business, even though we're looking at love, this is about things that are being well received. So we can also graft that message onto the business messages as well. This is just a really good time and a really good moment. And in fact, when we look at being able to make changes happen, all aspects of relationships this month, you can affect it almost immediately with your emotions and with what you're projecting out there. So if you're looking for new opportunities, you can find it. If you want to mend relationships, you can mend them. Um, if you want to separate or sever ties, you can do that. The high priestess, thoughts 
basically manifest in real time. That's why the synchronicity card came through and now it's all coming into focus here. And we'll end on that synchronicity here. Don't doubt something when you meet that opportunity, when you meet that synchronicity. Simply say, thank you, let's go for this. Let's see where it brings us. Okay, let's focus now on destiny. We have the offering. This is a really interesting card because it reminds me of any of the, the four aces that you would see in a Rider Waite Smith deck. So instead of having like a pentacle or a cup or any of the um, traditional sort of suits, it's just an open hand. So be open to all that the universe has to offer. It's saying, let go of the filters. Because sometimes when we see that particular ace, we're already thinking, oh, it has to be love or it has to be money or it has to be an idea, it has to be communication. And no, it could be any of them, all of them, none of them. This is much more like magician-like. So it's saying, um, you know, if the universe is offering an opportunity, all you have to do is say, I accept. You could also be offering something to the world at large, to clients, to a partner, and it's about not being afraid to put it out there and not limiting or overstructuring what it has to be like. There's a little bit of ambiguity that is a part of the creative process. And it is that liminal sort of energy that we saw in this Fool card. It is that liminal energy that the Flamingo wanted to bring in. It is the liminal energy that we were talking about with this Death card. So there is this sort of dance of creation that's happening. Not everything's going to be perfectly spelled out. Offer the best that you can and see what comes back in return. Don't be surprised if it's more than you thought. Because there is a lot of fear that maybe people won't understand or won't embrace it. But what if they do? And it's always worth putting out the positive instead of thinking, well, what if this doesn't work or what if that goes wrong? Well, what if it goes right? What if it exceeds your expectations? What if you're doing exactly what you need to in this moment in time? Let's go ahead now and expand this forecast to look at sun, rising and moon sign messages so we can get a clearer understanding of what this month has in store. Sun, rising, and moon. All right, let's start off with the sun sign messages. We have the seven of pentacles. Seven of pentacles is in reverse. I like what I see here because this is showing growth. We can even see this is almost like he's harvesting vegetables here, right? So it takes time to grow things. I like that they use this metaphor of, you know, plants or vegetables because you can't rush it with the seven of pentacles. Take your time. Re recovery, growth, and transformation takes time and um, patience. So continue to put the effort in, it's gonna be worth it. One thing that you can do, and a reminder to sort of like focus on in the Seven of Pentacles, is just not to overextend. Um, saying no is key, and being patient is key. And as long as you do that, you're set up for success, you're going to be all right, and um, it looks like you're headed in the right direction when it comes to money, time, resources, etc. For rising sign, we have the Knight of Swords in reverse. Don't be afraid to ask a question. Don't be afraid to speak up. This is a very direct card. This also invites you to slow down for a moment, basically pump the brakes and say to yourself, um, do I like the path that I'm on? If I don't, what changes can I make? What questions can I ask? What things can I do to basically steer the ship in the direction that it needs to be? So all of those messages are coming through loud and clear. Um, the other thing with this particular Knight of Swords, which I love, is his ability to kind of cut through all of the different levels of bureaucracy, or in this case, kind of cut through the fog and find a better path. So being as direct as possible, as clear as possible, and slowing down long enough to get your bearings. These are the things that are going to bring you success and happiness. As we take a look now at the moon sign, we have the Queen of Wands in reverse, the penultimate card of business and success. She's not afraid to call the shots. You can see her with that brilliant um, sort of sun-like crown above her head. And she's saying, I know what I want. I know how I'm going to do this. And I'm not afraid to speak up, to stand up for myself and to make it happen. She's standing in the rays of the sunlight too, saying, follow my lead. So don't be afraid to be a little headstrong or a little stubborn to, to basically show how it's going to be done and to lead by example. One area of opportunity 
especially since we're looking at moon sign here, is just to keep an open heart and an open mind. Sometimes she can be so stubborn or so closed uh, that it has to happen a certain way or be at a certain time that there may be something that um, is coming through a little bit easier or a little bit sooner or in a different package and it could pass you by. So you just want to keep an open heart and an open mind and say, oh, I hadn't thought about that, but that might be exactly what I need. All right. Now let's take a look at your final question. This is your chance to ask anything that I haven't yet covered, but still needs to be clarified. So let me give the cards a shuffle and let's see what the answer to your question is from Spirit. Four of Swords coming through here. You received the Four of Swords and this is an invitation to rest, to meditate, to take a vacation, do something where you can allow yourself to just be at ease. Many of you out there may be in project manager mode where you're running and running and running. And this is saying, make sure that you give that battery a chance to recharge, that you are also listening to spirit. That little bird is representing the voice of your higher self, of reason, and also spirit. That only comes through when you take a moment to slow down and be present. As a yes or no, this is a really interesting card because the Four of Swords is slightly passive. And so it's because it's a card of rest or putting something to rest. So I would say there's more opportunities. There's other things to explore. The traditional illustration would show a sepulcher or um, a coffin, and then there's a, a sword underneath. There might be something yet to come or something that you haven't, you know, again, unfinished business from the past. It feels like it's a different path. So I would say sleep on it and see what other options are out there. And then literally make sure you're getting enough rest meditation and sleep as well and this is one of the cards of death and transformation you got two of them this month death itself and the four of swords so you're you're going to find peace with things that's actually what this card can represent is peace of mind peace and quiet or peace with a change or a movement in your life. That brings this reading to a close. If you enjoyed it, do me a favor, hit the like and subscribe. It helps the channel. It also helps me know that this made a difference for you. You can follow me on social media. It's always my full name, Nicholas Ashbaugh, on all major platforms. Remember, I don't offer private readings and I don't send direct messages. So if you see anyone doing that, block, report, and also let me know. I appreciate that in advance. You can always go to my website for news and updates. Uh, I also put out new videos every Monday, Thursday, and Friday, and I do a daily card reading as well, and you can join me for a live stream every Sunday. Thank you so much for being a part of this, and by the way, for anybody that does want to give back, you can do so through Super Stickers, Super Chat, and Memberships. Take care, everybody. Wishing you all the best, and I'll see you soon.